I'm Stephen Bopart, uh, Bliss Professor of Engineering uh, and affiliations in the departments of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Bioengineering and Medicine at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. I'm also a full-time faculty member at the Beckman Institute for Advanced Science and Technology at Illinois. In my lab, we develop novel optical biomedical imaging technologies and then apply them to solving uh, problems in biology and medicine. And in particular, we, are, we translate technologies from the, the bench to the bedside, but also then uh, from the bedside to making an impact on clinical medicine. I think we've all heard of the, the phrase from bench to bedside. And uh, this is where we take new discoveries that are discovered in the lab and we translate those into applications for humans and perhaps in clinical medicine. Uh, but I feel that that's really only halfway there. So it's important to translate uh, to the patient, but then we also have to then move from the patient to the population. And so I like to call that transformational medicine uh, and research where we can take our ideas but really change the standard of care or really impact uh, our, our health and society in that way. So a lot of the technologies that are developed uh, in my lab and, and many other places, many other labs in, uh, around the world, uh, I, I believe are focused in this area and, and need to be because we need to be thinking uh, how we can really change the world. Um, we can do that as an academic institution uh, to bring our ideas to the patient, uh, translate those ideas, but we really need to partner with industry if we're going to transform things and change the practice of, of care. And the reason for that is because obviously we have to disseminate our ideas, we have to be able to develop um, safe and approved uh, technologies that can then be um, uh, investigated at multi-institutional trials and uh, to be able to apply to larger patient studies. So teaming up academic and industry type partnerships I think are going to be essential for doing that. One of the focus areas for my group has been in using optical technologies to diagnose and help in the treatment of breast cancer. And uh, this has been work that's been going on probably for over 10 years now in my lab. Again, starting at the bench level where we're using optical techniques like optical coherence tomography to be able to uh, identify breast cancer in, in resected specimens, but then begin to translate this. So we develop portable systems, uh, including handheld probes where we can take our new systems into the operating room and be able to look at uh, resected tissue specimens. And even now today we're, we're using advanced systems that can do imaging in vivo, so in the tumor cavity. And we have systems that the surgeon would use now, a probe, to be able to examine the tumor cavity and to be able to determine if there's any residual tumor cells left behind after the, the tumor was removed. And this is important because over 30 percent of breast cancer surgeries actually result in reoperations. So a, the tumor is removed, the patient goes home, uh, the tumor specimen is examined by pathologists in the path lab several days later oftentimes. And, and it's only then that's discovered when they had a chance to microscopically examine the tissue that uh, they have to be able to um, uh, bring the patient back to remove more tissue. So techniques like optical coherence tomography allow us to be able to give that microscopic view to the surgeon in real time. So he or she can then interact and, and um, respond to that information immediately. So this, is, this technology, as I said, in order to be uh, disseminated more broadly, uh, we, needed, we started a, a small startup company, uh, Diagnostic Photonics, which took this technology, is building commercial systems, <clears throat> and is now involved in larger multi-institutional trials. Along with the, the use of optical coherence tomography for looking at breast tissue, uh, one of the things that we know, and, we, and by observing what surgeons currently do, uh, they oftentimes will feel around the tumor cavity, they'll palpate to determine if there's any residual tumor that may be left behind. Well, this is an indication that there are mechanical differences in the tissue that could suggest disease. Well, one of the ways that we can then develop optical imaging techniques to look at these biomechanical properties is through a technique we, op we call optical coherence elastography. Now, this 
essentially uses an OCT platform, but measures the biomechanical properties of the tissue. With elastography, we have to mechanically perturb the tissue in some way. And we can do that with external uh, mechanical forces. Uh, we can apply mechanical forces and observe propagations of the mechanical waves through the tissue. We can use our imaging, our very sensitive phase resolved imaging techniques to monitor very small micron or nanoscale displacements of the tissue. And once we collect images before and after or even during these mechanical waves, we can then understand and back out what the mechanical properties of the tissue are. What's the elasticity, what's the viscosity, uh, many other mechanical properties that we can back out from that, that image information. There's a number of ways we can actually collect an image before. We can statically compress or apply um, a mechanical force to the tissue to deform it and then collect another image to see how did it deform. And, and different regions will deform differently depending on their mechanical properties. Uh, we can also deliver more of a sinusoidal or a step response or impulse uh, of a mechanical force and then that sets up a number of different waves that will propagate through the tissue. In fact, um, in my group, uh, we've looked at this in breast cancer. Uh, we've also looked at it in single cells and, and cell cultures. Um, people are applying this to the cornea, uh, to skin, many other areas where, again, in any of these disease processes, the mechanical properties will change just as the structure will change.